Everyone Wants to Cure MS. This is a book curing MS by Dr. Howard Weiner, one of the most well-known MS researchers about the scientific discoveries which could lead to an MS cure. He's very well known. His accomplishments are significant. In fact, I was just talking with a colleague earlier today about his cyclophosphamide protocol to treat fulminant MS, but none of the discoveries discussed in his book have led to a cure so far. This is from the website of Biogen, a pharmaceutical company that develops MS drugs, including Avinex, Tecpidera, and Tysabri. Quote, while we focus on advancing current assets in our pipeline, we aspire to pioneer disruptive therapies for MS prevention and cure through exploration in emerging science. They don't want to just treat MS, they want to eradicate MS, and if they didn't, perhaps they're in the wrong business. On social media, the term cure comes up frequently. These posts on Twitter suggest a dissatisfaction, although MS therapies have improved and the prognosis is getting better on average, people don't want slight gradual change over time, they want a cure. These are some YouTube videos about curing MS, but they may be a bit overly optimistic. For instance, this video from The Sci Show has over 700,000 views, and it talks about famous recent publications about the association between Epstein-Barr virus, the cause of mononucleosis, and multiple sclerosis, and how emerging therapeutics, for instance, a reverse vaccine that could induce immunotolerance in people with MS, could be a treatment for the disease, but it's in very early preliminary studies, and the title, We're Probably Going to Cure MS, is a bit speculative in my view. The National MS Society is the number one MS charity in the United States, and they don't just want to treat MS or bring new therapeutics to people with MS. They want to eradicate MS, to end MS, to imagine a world free of multiple sclerosis, but can they deliver? Some sources claim the cure for MS is already here and readily available. For instance, this website claims that aspartame, the popular artificial sweetener, is the cause of MS, and if we get rid of it, we can eliminate MS worldwide. Now, they claim that aspartame turns into the toxin methanol. There are various problems with this. One is that aspartame was discovered in 1965, and MS was increasing in prevalence long before that. Also, the demographics don't quite work out. There are some countries like China, China, where aspartame is popular, but MS is rare, and also methanol toxicity causes a different neurological disease and isn't associated with the stereotypic MS MRI findings. But other websites sound better, but are equally dubious. This article says, could what makes multiple sclerosis worse lead to a cure? It's referring to a scientific publication suggesting that a particular gene is associated with worse prognosis in MS. However, the gene only has a weak correlation with MS disability. Also, what exactly would we do about it? Even if we could completely eliminate the gene, it would only slightly change the prognosis. And if we had that technology, we could cure various other diseases first. Here's a quote from Dr. Stephen Hauser of University of California, San Francisco, whom I interviewed on this channel previously about his excellent memoir and decades-long experience with MS research. Quote, I think we can, in the next few years, completely suppress the disease in most people. If the proverbial tea leaves continue to point to the direction that they do today, the battle is not yet won, but all the pieces are in place to soon reach the finish line, a cure for MS. Now, I don't think this quote reflects his actual views. In fact, he wrote an excellent article about the definition of an MS cure and expressed views I'm about to endorse myself. Itself. But if I take this quote at face value, what exactly does it mean? What technology is impending that would allow us to cure MS in all individuals? I have to say I'm not aware of it. And that brings us to the broader idea, what does an MS cure look like? There are different definitions we could make up. One would be stopping the inflammatory characteristics of MS, and that's the hallmark of MS, that it's an autoimmune disease that causes dramatic relapse lapses, subacute periods of significant worsening, and new lesions on the MRI scan. And of course, we have good treatments for this now. There are certain medications such as Casimta, Ofatumumab, which in clinical trials reduced gadolinium-enhancing or active new lesions, 
by 99 to 100% and were fairly good at stopping relapses. Now, of course, having to take an ongoing treatment long term doesn't seem like a cure. You would want number two in indefinite remission where you didn't have to see doctors, you didn't have to receive medications or other treatments or do any monitoring. But that also exists today for some people. Certain standard medications like Lemtrada or Cladribine can sometimes lead to long-term remission. And of course, hematopoietic stem cell transplant can sometimes lead to indefinite remission. Not for everyone with MS. Certainly, I have seen patients who have had hematopoietic stem cell transplant and have progression later on. It's not perfect, but some people could experience a cure. There's a challenge in that, in that people can develop progressive MS many years after being stable with relapsing MS. So it's hard to say someone is cured five or 10 years after the onset of the disease, but some people are stable for many decades after they're treated with these treatments. It's maybe a little bit too early to tell for certain treatments like Lemtrada, and some people do develop relapses or progression years later. But of course, some people, they don't really have relapses or make new lesions on the MRI. They have progressive multiple sclerosis where they're slowly getting worse. And of course, if we really want to cure the disease, we would want to stop progression as well, number three. And there's actually a lot of evidence that this is the real MS, as Professor G. Gavin Giovanoni at Barts in London says, that that really seems to drive the majority of accumulated disability in the long run in people with MS. And relapses and new MRI lesions are actually less important. We don't have a drug that's 99% effective at stopping progression, and even hematopoietic stem cell transplant may be ineffective in progressive MS. Of course, there are other people who have significant advanced long-standing disability. They've had weakness in their legs or cognitive impairment for many years. They have a lot of signs of permanent injury on their MRI scans. They have black holes, which correlate with loss of axons or the nerve fibers on autopsy studies. They have atrophy or shrinkage of the brain. They have literally lost mass of their brain, similar to diseases like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. So we would really need something that reverses disability, and the only plausible way to do that would be to actually regrow nerve tissue. That's very different from stopping inflammation. And of course, if we really wanted to cure MS, we wouldn't just want to cure the young, healthy people who look good anyway. We would want to cure everyone with MS, even people who have had it for a long time and have advanced disability. And we're unfortunately quite far from that. For instance, this is data from the oratorio trial, Ucrevis versus placebo in primary progressive multiple sclerosis. This was touted as a breakthrough because previously there was no FDA approved drug for primary progressive MS. However, looking at the actual data, this is cumulative probability of progression. This is confirmed disability progression, which means someone has worsening disability on an examination, and it wasn't just random fluctuation because on a follow-up exam, they still had worse disability than their baseline. And you can see that the blue line, Ukravis, there was less disability progression, but only slightly less, 24% less than placebo. We don't have a drug that's 50, 75%, or 90% effective in reducing disability progression. Other clinical trials on drugs for progressive MS, like Mazent in secondary progressive MS shows similar modest benefits. Now, that's not to say I'm pessimistic about the future. Of course, things could get better with emerging technologies. Hematopoietic stem cell transplant is very toxic. Maybe that's not something all people would want to risk, but we could have better treatments that, for instance, only target autoreactive lymphocytes and could cause long-term inflammatory remission without the risk of infertility, infections, and other complications. I think many aspects of progressive MS may be treatable. There's increasing evidence 
evidence that there's actually slow inflammation driven by innate immune cells within the central nervous system that is causing subtle damage over time in the areas of old injury. And that may be not targeted well by our current treatments, which work on lymphocytes, but could be treated with other drugs like tolibrutinib and other Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors. However, there's not really one agent that appears to be emerging that is certain to be effective. The drugs that may come out in the next few years may have some benefit in progressive MS, but they don't seem to stop it completely. I do think the Epstein-Barr virus pathway is important. It is possible we could develop an EBV vaccine and prevent people from getting Epstein-Barr virus infection by vaccinating people early in life and potentially preventing some cases of MS, but I don't think it will cure everyone who has it today. I even think regeneration is possible if you have an intact neuron and axon or nerve fiber and there's just damage to the myelin. We know remyelination is possible. It happens spontaneously in humans with MS. Legendary neuropathologist Dr. Bruce Trapp demonstrated that oligodendrocyte precursor cells, the precursors to the cells which make myelin in the adult brain and spine, are present in multiple sclerosis plaques, even in people with advanced multiple sclerosis, with progressive disease and advanced disability. Perhaps we can develop drugs which target this. Will an emerging drug like PIPE 307 be effective? We don't know, but there's no guarantee it will be. Loss of neurons and axons is an even greater challenge, but I can't say it's impossible to fix, and there are ongoing innovative regenerative technologies trying to address this. It's just that I can't guarantee any of them emerging right now will be successful. So it's not that I don't think there's hope for a cure, it's just that I don't see current emerging technologies that have a very high probability of leading to a cure or indefinite remission or reversible of long-standing disability in the majority of people with MS right now. For instance, I couldn't conceive that in 10 or 20 years, it may be possible to fly on a jet plane to London in 30 minutes from where I am in Los Angeles, but I couldn't tell you what technologies would develop or when they would develop or guarantee that this could be achieved in a specific period of time, it's just impossible to predict that kind of thing. And I do think there's some danger in being overly optimistic about an impending cure for MS. It could cause people to refuse current treatments, thinking they have too many side effects, thinking they should just wait it out. And maybe people would be less aggressive about doing the things they can do right now, be it taking medication or exercising or improving your diet or doing other things to help with your MS and live your life to the fullest. And I'd be interested to know what is your definition, your personal definition of a cure for MS? Is it just stopping relapses and new MRI lesions? Does it have to be an indefinite cure such that you don't need follow-up treatments or MRI scans or monitoring by a doctor, you just don't have to worry about it? Does it have to halt progression in all people with progressive MS? And does it have to reverse disability in people with long-standing significant disability? And do you think think that this cure is likely to happen in your lifetime or in a specific period of time, like in the next 10 or 20 years, let me know your thoughts in the comments below.